slowly is adding you to it. Hopefully, be here in a second, and we can kick this LWO live chat off. Connecting. Ah, there we are. There you are. Let's see. I don't know which direction I am. That way works perfectly. Not that way. No, go back the other way. Yes. Perfect. All right. You're straight to me, so hopefully you're straight on your screen. Uh, I'm sideways to myself, so... Oh, really? Uh, no problem, <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you're, you're straight on the screen from this side, so... Okay. I think... Okay. No, nah. well, look, I first and foremost really, really do appreciate this for working out, because as I was saying before you jumped on, we haven't really even spoken. I reached out to you on okay. Instagram. I saw that you're into hypnosis and a coach mm -hmm. in that space, okay. and really just wanted to invite you on here and share your story and uh, inspire whoever's watching and everything like that. So uh, I'm really happy to be here, really excited. So let's get into it. <laughs> perfect. Now, I also I want to make sure that we've got plenty of time at the, um, I guess, towards the end to be able to speak really about what you're doing now. But what I just want to start mm -hmm. doing is, is uh, and the reason why I asked sort of like a bit of that journey aspect there's a lot of people obviously that are watching and this is my intention for these uh, live chats is to um, be obviously relatable to just the general public and people who are, uh, you know, maybe going from one place and wanting to transition into their passion, how do they find their passion and uh, mm -hmm. just some of the internal thoughts that may have been going on for yourself at the time and how you overcame that because uh, I think to some degree, there's a little bit of a lack of education as to how to understand your internal dialogue, how to be able to work with it. So, um, mm. as you said, you used to be in the, the media and uh, the film documentary okay. world. So I'll let you take it away. Okay. Um, well, I was working in post-production in documentary film and uh, really enjoyed it just because I, I really enjoyed people's stories. Um, but I also felt like something was missing. I studied psychology actually in my undergrad and was a huge passion for me. Um, and I always thought that I would uh, be a therapist at some point in my life, but I didn't really know how that was going to happen, uh, yeah. how that was going to transpire. And then I was on vacation uh, visiting my best friend and my cousin, and my cousin had seen a hypnotist for smoking. And mm. since I was on vacation and I had some time, I figured, why not try it out, see what this thing is all about? And I just fell in love with it. Uh, you know, I did maybe four or five sessions with her. And um, all of a sudden, my thoughts were changing in my mind without me really doing anything. And, and you know, happy thoughts, you know, thoughts, you know, you know, positive thoughts in my head towards myself. And that was something somewhat new to me, to be honest. Yep. Um, and so I thought, oh, you know, I've got to take a class somewhere. I've got to, you know, learn more about this. And um, I started Googling even, even when I was on vacation, just seeing where in Los Angeles I could take a class. Um, yep. And then when I saw the school that I eventually ended up going to, it's, it's the top school in the world for hypnosis and was right in my backyard, was five minutes away from my house. And I had driven by it for six years and never even noticed it was there. <laughs> at all. Um, and uh, I went in for an interview and I already knew, I didn't really need the interview to know that I was going to uh, enroll and yep. just uh, started taking classes and little by little went from there. And I just, I'm, I love it. I love helping people with this, this modality. It's amazing. Yeah. And it's, it's one that's been showing up on my radar a little bit lately as well. And it's something that I'm more curious, my background being in the NLP space and to some degree, right, I think yeah. hypnosis is sort of a similar aspect to it. But um, yeah, and I generally use a lot of NLP in my practice um, with my clients. Yeah. So going back to, because uh, I think also there's a bit of a misconceived idea around hypnosis and uh, what it does to you uh, right. in some sort of a way. Um, so going back to before you actually jumped into the sessions or when your friend did it for smoking, uh, sorry, friend or yeah. cousin? Um, cousin. cousin. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was the sort of thoughts going through your head at the time? Like, what was your understanding of it? And, um, you know, what was it? I guess also, what was it that you were looking at, looking to get out of it? Uh, well, my, I, I was interested in it. She had, she had done it and it had worked for her. And so she had made that change in her life. So um, I, 
I wasn't really fearful of it, uh, though mm. I did research the person that I went to see quite heavily online before I saw her because I wanted to make sure that she had good credentials and she knew what she was doing. I didn't want to just walk into a session with someone who had no credentials. So I did yeah. that and I felt comfortable that she had experience and uh, I just wanted to see what it was like. I really didn't have a ton of preconceived notions about it. Um, and I personally had some pain, man pain management issues uh, yeah. with uh, 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 grinding my teeth. And so I thought, I just want some relaxation out of it. That's all I was thinking really at the time. Mm. So that I think is a very interesting thing that you just sort of uh, touched on there around having the uh, grinding your teeth. Because I know that's a really, really common uh, right. issue for a it lot is. of people. Um, yeah. Now, I guess the perception for my own self is around, it's something in the unconscious mind that is, um, right. you know, that stress and tension, and everything like that, and it's just showing up in the physical from a grinding of the teeth perspective. Um, right. exactly. So with yourself in that, because I, um, yeah, I know a couple of people that do grind their teeth and I wouldn't have even thought about uh, teeth grinding and hypnosis. I would have never have thought about connecting the two. Mm -hmm. um, so just maybe also just talk through some of the actual sessions and things as well as to how you operate and um, how you found it when you were going through it. Okay. Um, well, the first session I went very deep into hypnosis and what I didn't know at the time is that people who have pain management issues tend to go really deep into hypnosis because we're already pretty much in hypnosis most of the time because we're constantly That's interesting. pain. Um, and it was the first time that I could actually not feel the pain because one of the side effects of being in that state is actually uh, anesthesia. So I was relaxed. I was aware. I wasn't asleep, but I was not in pain anymore. And that was yeah. an amazing feeling to me for myself. Yeah. Um, and then along the process, of course, we worked on a ton of different um, things that I was dealing with personally. And I, I found that really helpful as well. And so I've used it to, um, manage uh, my pain for myself uh, and I, I teach people how to do that. Um, I help people mm. with a whole host of different issues that they're dealing with. Obviously, it's very well known for smoking and weight loss yes. and um, anxiety. And anxiety is um, one of the big ones that I work on quite often with people. Um, and it's funny, I, I tell people, you know, you think that you're coming in to get hypnotized, but for the most part, I have to actually dehypnotize people because people are walking around and a sort of hypnotic state all day every day and I have to sort of teach them how to become more grounded and uh, get into their conscious mind more so that they can have be alert and uh, have their logic have their reason and having their decision making so um, they're more in control so it actually helps people to become more in control of their lives a lot of people think that you know you're giving up control but I'm actually teaching you how to gain more control in your life that is in my mind when you just said that you're kind of dehypnotizing people, my mind just went inside out because that's yeah. not even the perception that I have of it. But I also appreciate through my own uh, coaching and clients, um, it's I, I can connect the two through the NLP knowledge that I have. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So how do you, I guess there's two questions. One is when somebody's coming to you for a, a hypnosis session, uh, mm -hmm. and I want to focus just specifically on the hypnosis side of things, um, do, is it something that they need to actually speak about or can they not necessarily express what there is that they actually want to work with and then for yourself to guide through? Because I just say that from the point of knowing some of the NLP techniques, the person doesn't actually mm -hmm. obviously have to convey it, but you could actually utilize um, you know, moving through and breakthroughs and things like that. So is hypnosis the same or is it more of a spoken uh, process? Uh, it's more of a spoken process. So what we do initially in the first part of the session is very much like a regular therapy session. We talk about the issue. Uh, they let me know what they're wanting to change in their lives. And I might use some NLP techniques um, while I'm speaking with them and sort of gaining a lot of uh, information about you know, how they'd like to be instead of how they are right now, mm. how they'd like to feel, you know, the experience that they'd like to have, maybe, you know, thinking of a mentor and, and, and uh, you know, what they see as the qualities in that mentor that they would like to have and uh, having them really feel that in the conscious state. And then I put them in a very relaxed state and our mind can't tell the difference between fantasy and reality. So in that state, I have them 
bring up, for example, you know, confidence, having them feel incredibly confident, remembering a time when they achieved a goal that they um, never thought that they could achieve, and, and then bringing that into the issue that they are trying to deal with and, you know, build that confidence specifically for that issue. Yeah. So we do need to, you know, talk about the issue, and I need to gain a lot of information about, you know, what's going on. And I do go uh, behaviorally first uh, in terms of my therapy, and then we might go into cause later on if uh, I see that that might not be the right path for them for that specific yeah. issue. Yeah, because I know um, when people come to for a coach or something like that, obviously it's all about creating that safe space. And I can already get that, even though this is really the first time that we've spoken, I can already get that sense that you have that innate ability to be able to create a safe space for people to be able to open up mm -hmm. and to be able to express what there is so that ultimately that in itself feeds into the breakthroughs that you get for your clients in a massive, massive way. Uh, I can already get a sense of that. So, Well, the way I see the therapeutic process is that it is a very um, safe space that I take very seriously. And I mm. always see it as a, the, the therapeutic relationship is like a microcosm of what's going on in the rest of their lives. And so it's my duty to help them to, you know, make the changes that they want to make in order to make their lives, you know, as fulfilled as they can possibly make it. Yeah, absolutely. Now I'm thinking about an experience for myself. I, many, many years ago, I went to a uh, an illusionist show, and I knew that this mm. I knew this particular show they did have a segment around hypnosis. So when mm -hmm. in one of the breaks they made mention who wants to come up on stage and be hypnotized, I went racing up there, but it didn't work for me. Now. Um, mm -hmm. And I just want to, I guess, open that into when somebody comes to hypnosis, at least my experience there was it was around, well, one, I really wanted to, I wanted to experience that hypnosis. And two, I guess at the same time, maybe I wanted it too much. So there can be a bit of a, I guess, well, at least from my own experience, and maybe there's other people that have experienced something similar and just thinking that hypnosis is uh, a load of garbage and all of the... Mm -hmm. um, uh, being able to program the subconscious mind. How have you found with your clients that you've worked with? Is it a case of, or is one of the keys, one, obviously you creating the safe space so that they can soften and be able to relax. That would definitely be a, a, a big key, but another aspect mm -hmm. about them being open to it. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the way I work, I mean, you know, the clients that come to me, I, I need them to be at least open to the process. They don't have to necessarily believe that it'll work, but they need to be open to the process and willing to work on the issue. Um, when it comes to stage shows, you know, it's, it's a completely different experience going to a stage show and to um, do therapy, therapeutic hypnosis. So uh, we're all taking in the information constantly. Um, some of us more literally and, and some of us more inferred and some, some of us are right smack dab in the middle. So when you go to a show, um, the people that are con conducting the show have ways to sort of figure out who is more suggestible and who would be more willing to come up on stage and sort of play the game, so to speak. So if you mm -hmm. don't want to say something in hypnosis, you won't. If you don't want to do something in hypnosis, you won't. But those people that are right snap, smack dab in the middle, that are constantly in hypnosis, that are taking in information from all different sides, those are the people that are much more willing to sort of play the game in a hypnosis show. And yeah. so, you know, that's why it, it's, it's an entertaining sort of thing for people. But when it comes to actual therapeutic hypnosis, it's much different. And, and so I, I see people that are from all parts of the spectrum, you know, and so I have to gauge how they take in information, what's going to be the best way to help them. Uh, and I do that through a series of suggestibility testing in the first session. Um, and it's really tailor made to um, help them specifically with their specific issue. So um, I don't know if that answered the question. <laughs> it really does, actually, because um, you touched on something that I wasn't even really uh, aware of to touch on, but really comparing the two between the stage show hypnosis there, you know, turn you into a chicken type thing um, versus right. the, the therapeutic side of things, which is all around, uh, you know, obviously it's, it's very different. So 
I think that is that is a massive, massive thing because there could be people that are wanting to understand it or maybe trial it from the smoking perspective or the weight loss uh, benefits and things like that, but are a little bit on the edge because they've st seen that uh, that stage show with uh, you know everybody clucking around like a chicken or something. So I think that is a really massive um, value add to to put in there. I think the biggest fear for people because when they see all they see is a stage show, they think they're going to lose control. And like I mentioned before, actually hypnosis is a way to actually help you gain more control in your life and to mm -hmm. understand controlling your mind and your body and your spirit. Uh, and that's something I think everyone should learn. And it's so basically my goal is to help someone over a relatively short period of time learn the tools so that they can be able to, you know, take that for the rest of their lives and how to deal with the issues that they're dealing with. And once I help them with one issue, it can, you know, go into many different issues that they can help themselves deal with. Yeah. And I think that's, that is crucial. And you did make mention about that before about giving the, the your client that you're working with the tools so that they're almost to some degree becoming uh, self-reliant and, and not actually dependent on yourself. And, uh, right. That is definitely, in my view, at least the way I do the coaching as well, as far as like that should be the view because it, the client should not be uh, dependent on yourself. So, um, right. and but at the same time, I think there's a very good uh, thing to highlight just the fact that the hypnosis techniques and uh, processes are something that you can actually utilize for yourself. Mm -hmm. I teach people all the time how to put themselves into hypnosis and how to give themselves some nice suggestions and, and come out and so that they can do that on a daily basis in order to help themselves um, with whatever issue that they're dealing with. Yeah. So with that, uh, and at the same and time, sorry, I go for it, it also helps them um, with anxiety and, you know, staying calm throughout the day, which we all need. And that was kind of leading into what I was about to ask as well, as far as like, what are some of the transformations that you have seen people go through as a result of hypnosis? Um, you know, it can be a very liberating experience, for example, for someone who can't control their anxiety and to, to learn how to do that. And we're all going to have anxiety. It's, it's something that we just have to accept, but it's how we deal with it. Um, you know, that can be a huge transformational thing for someone um, obviously, you know, losing the weight that they were wanting to lose or, uh, you know, not smoking and, and really not thinking that the, the hypnosis is going to work for smoking. But now all of a sudden, you know, they have no desire to smoke a cigarette. Um, a lot of fears and phobias, you know, going to the dentist and realizing that, you know, they can be relaxed and comfortable and, and go through, you know, dentist treatment or flying you know a lot of people can't visit their families and it's it's That's true. detrimental to their lives so i mean just to be able to get on a plane and go visit your family member that might be you know getting ready to pass away that's like you know a huge thing for someone there's a whole host of different things relationships i mean i can work with a lot of different things to help people gain control of their lives yeah that is it is fascinating as you said you had from a very young age, you had an interest into this space. Um, okay. Where does that interest come from for yourself? I've always been interested in people and their interactions with each other. I don't know where it's just, it's always been in me. I, I've, I would always watch kids at school or try to understand the psyche behind why they did certain things and you know as a teenager I'd be in the self-help section of the bookstore always reading all the self-help books you know I always wanted to understand um, my own thoughts my own emotions and and then you know why other people do the things they do or act the way they act it's just always been something ingrained in me yeah wow and I um so when you actually started, that's right, I tend to have a couple of different thoughts going through in my head. Um, when you got started into that curiosity space, um, if there's somebody, say, watching this, watching the replay, and they're starting to find that they, to themselves, are wanting to learn more about just people in general and having that fascination, whilst I would assume that they may end up following their intuition and go down the path of, you know, finding a few resources and things. But where would you suggest, based on your knowledge and experience and uh, your own journey, where would you say to go and start looking into? Um, I mean, reading books is a great way to start, you know, like anything that you're interested in, you know, 
pick up a book, you know, it might lead you to the next book and the next book and the next book and, and it might lead you to your path. You know, I'm right now, you know, I'm, I'm really getting into sound healing and, you know, I didn't think yeah. that I'd be really into it, but, you know, um, just something that sort of sparks an interest, you know, take the time to really look into it and see if it's something that you might be interested in. Yeah. And then when it comes to making the transition, so when you're in the, the media and post-production space to actually really step into this. Yeah. So let's just yeah. walking somebody through that process of, okay, they've, they're in something that they don't necessarily enjoy. They're starting to, I guess, wake up for lack of better terminology, but have that curiosity around mm -hmm. exploring a new world. And now going and having a look at some of the resources and saying, okay, I want to take a, a different direction and move into this uh, space. How did you find that transition from the post-production media space into the coaching world? Like, how did you find that for yourself? Um, well, you know, I had a space of time where I was in school and learning um, all the techniques that I needed to learn in order to do this work. And so I think little by little, just taking on clients and, and um, you know, getting experience with it and not necessarily diving right in right away, just, you know, building it slowly. That's what worked for me. Some people might just mm. dive into something uh, right away because they're so passionate about it and, and sink or swim, swim kind of attitude. But for me, it was little by little. You know, yeah. it was you know, for myself, making sure that this is right for me, making sure that this actually works. Because at first, you're, you know, you learn the techniques and just, you're just like, is this actually going to work on people? <laughs> but then yeah. you see that it does. <laughs> You know, and then little by little, you gain the confidence that you need in order to uh, build it more. And then you get referrals from people who, you know, loved your work and tell their friends and family. And then little by little, you just uh, start doing it. <laughs> and one day you wake up and realize that you are doing it, which is another yeah. interesting moment. Yeah. And I think also not being deterred by setbacks. Because you mm. are going it, to, it's a learning curve. I'm still learning. You know, yeah. every client teaches me something new. Every person is a, is a puzzle, you know. So it's not being afraid of a setback and really using it in order to propel you forward. Yeah, that is such a powerful thing. So with that, what's uh, one sort of internal thought process analysis or anything like that or a bit of wisdom that you could share to somebody who may uh, be going through that setback and then, um, you know, wanting to move forward through it or really now starting to question uh, their direction. What's something that you experience for yourself? What's your internal dialogue self-talk when it comes to uh, those setbacks? You know what, for me, um, I always have uh, that quote in my head, when you know better, you do better. And so I always just put that into my mind anytime that I have a setback. I learned something from this and I'm going to use it to make me better. That's yeah. always the internal dialogue in my head. I, and I can see that that <laughs> just that, that mere memory and the reflection of that really lights you up as far as I can yeah. see that's where yeah. you get a lot of drive and passion from. It was powerful for me. It was freeing because, you know, you can continue to beat yourself up about, you know, something that you did, or you can really understand that, you know, this was something new for you. You learn something from it. Now take that learning and move forward. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. There was a question that I had from one of my clients the other day um, that they too are stepping into a, a coaching space. And this question, and I'm just curious to hear your answer from it, was um, it was the transition of the identity from the past, whatever it was that you were doing into the coaching side of things. What is, mm -hmm. what was your experience was actually starting to own the idea of being a coach and how did that show up for yourself? I think for me, it was learning to connect to whatever higher power you believe in, you yep. know, my, you know, my, my connection and using that, like my body and my mind as a conduit to help other people. And when I was able to do that, I think it freed me from a lot of the fears that I had before, you mm -hmm. know, when I just really was quiet and was able to 
trust that I would be able to help this person with, you know, my highest self and th their highest self in the same room together, that energy, using that energy to propel the sessions forward. That's sort of how I look at it. <laughs> yeah, totally. And I completely relate, completely relate. Um, and then to sort of outside of the sessions when you're actually introducing yourself and those first couple mm -hmm. of days where you're, or probably the first number of months when you're really going, okay, I'm going to do this, but you're, you're not really shouting it to the world. You're sort of saying, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be a coach. <laughs> yeah. Um, like with that experience, and I guess it comes back to the setbacks as well, because when you mm -hmm. do move into the space of coaching, which obviously seems to be something a lot of people are also wanting to do as well. And, but mm -hmm. being able to own it because so many people have their projections of like, why you? you know, what's so special about you or anything like that. So in the early days of starting into the coaching space, or look, it could be anything, it could be a different business, it could be anything like that. But owning um, that identity and introducing yourself as, hey, I'm a coach or I'm a what, whatever it is, and actually being strong in that um, connection to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I do this with my clients and I do it with myself as well. You know, I think we don't realize how much we've accomplished in our lives until it's uh, brought up to us. So I like to just write down the things that I've accomplished. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, something in the outside world. It could be something for myself. And all of these accomplishments have taught me many lessons that I can bestow on other people to help them. And so that helps me give me the confidence to know that, yeah, me, I can do this, you know, I, I, I have something to share. Yeah, yeah. And that just comes back to really cementing your value and your, your worth in that space, which is absolutely powerful. Mm -hmm. Right. Actually, it's a, it's a similar exercise that my coach gave me as far as um, at the end of the day, writing the gratitude, which was something I, w I was doing at some point anyway, but then also writing some wins. But then having another section was really around completion because I knew myself as somebody who didn't complete things. So it's mm -hmm. in alignment with um, bringing that to your conscious awareness as to what you're saying. So I'm glad I'm on the right track with that one. <laughs> and just to give you a little bit of hypnosis information, uh, 30 minutes before you go to bed and 30 minutes before, like after you wake up, that's the prime time to put anything into your subconscious mind because you're getting ready to go to sleep. You actually have to pass through that state of hypnosis in order to get to sleep. So that's when your subconscious mind is really open. So it's the best time to really... Uh, write those things out and, and put that into your subconscious so that you can make the changes you want to make. So just to clarify that, so it's uh, the first 30 minutes after waking up and then the and last, 30, the last minutes 30 minutes before bed. So I guess that leads into a really powerful question, which is, you know, morning routines and evening routines for yourself. Because mm -hmm. that's, I'm gathering that makes up a, a part of the framework for yourself, but yeah, what does is, what is a morning ritual look like, look like for yourself? Um, for me, it's meditation. I take um, 5 to 15 minutes. It, it doesn't have to be long. I think a lot of people think that, you know, you have to meditate for hours to get benefit out of it, but <laughs> yeah. that's not the case. Um, you really just need a few minutes to sort of set your intention for the day, um, pick out a few things that you want to accomplish for the day, and are level of happiness is really only at a level where we've accomplished two or three things in the day. Anything more than that, we really don't uh, reach any higher level of happiness or um, uh, in, in our accomplishments. I mean, of course, it's great if we do more than that. But to have an intention of at least a few things that you want to get uh, done throughout the day, and if you get more done, that's even better. Um, and that's really going to propel your confidence uh, throughout the day. And the weeks and the months and the years. So setting that intention right in the morning is a great thing to do. Uh, so I do that in the morning as well as, you know, um, vision boards, just taking time to look at your vision board. And, and that also, you know, sets in your subconscious mind, your intention for the future as well. Mm. So I just want to uh, go back to the meditation side, because again, this is another topic that I think is, uh, maybe not explained enough for a lot of people. A lot of people think that the idea of meditation is purely just to stop thinking, which is, you know, near on impossible. So what mm -hmm. does your meditation practice look like? Um, I 
prefer to give myself some positive suggestions. Mm-hmm. I find that to be more beneficial for me. Um, so I might, you know, pick a few things that I feel like I need to work on and write out some uh, suggestions uh, in the positive, no negatives written down because our subconscious does not accept negatives. So for example, if you say, I don't want to eat that cake, you're going to be eating that cake. Yeah. So um, I'll just put them in the positive and then put myself in a really relaxed state. Um, put myself in a place where for me is a relaxing environment in my mind yep. and then give myself those suggestions and then bring myself out. And I feel much more able to handle the day. Yeah. So would you say that it's kind of like a mantra um, type yeah. meditation or yeah. it's because the, the yeah. other one around that is a, it has, has got a lot of publicity is transcendental meditation, which I'm assuming right. yeah. is slightly different again, slightly different focus. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So you, for you, it's in and around bringing in those um, the positive mantras, if you want. Right. So how and, do you... And saying it as if it's already happened. Yeah, right. You know? And how do you find... Um, for me, when I start my meditation, I tend to start with a body scan because it, it helps me to control my mind at the start as opposed to focusing on my breathing because... I find at least I can focus on my body, which is a physical and my mind has then got something to sort of grab onto. How do you find, cause that's probably the hardest part and that's probably where most people stop as far as trying to focus on the breathing and all, of a sudden, all the thoughts going on. So how do you actually quiet your mind? How do you sit in or drop into that space of, for the meditation itself? Well, for myself, because I've gone into hypnosis so many times and I've hypnotized so many people and I've been hypnotized <laughs> so many times, it's pretty easy. Yeah. I just have to count myself down yep. um, from five to zero. And I also like to um, close my eyes and actually roll up my eyes uh, in my head. If you, if you think about um, looking at your forehead with your yep. eyes closed, yep. that's actually going to be the deepest state of um, hypnosis. So really? it, it helps you get uh, into that deep state. That's what I do. <laughs> I've never, ever heard about the, the rolling the eyes aspect. Yeah. So, so you, you might, the first stage is like a fluttering of the eyelashes. Yeah. And then you, you'd you see someone's eyes moving side to side. That's the second stage. And then when the eyes roll up in the head, that's when you're in the deepest state. So would the eyes then be up for the whole period? Or no, is it sort of just, up to I, sort of drop yeah, in and then... I just, I just do that for like, you know, a minute or two to help me drop down into that state. Oh, I'm going to give that a go next time. Yeah. <laughs> See how just that plays ima- out. Also, a great thing to do is imagine seeing on your forehead your power word for the day. Yep. Um, uh, that is also very powerful in helping um, bring that out in you for the day. Yeah. Wow. I, yeah, I've never heard about those two aspects. So that's really, really powerful. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, wanting to start wrapping this up soon, but before I do, what is, where can people find you? Obviously we've got our links on Facebook and stuff like that. So if anybody's right. on my friend's page and is interested in anything that you're uh, offering or any of the work, actually, I should ask one other question. Do you only work face to face or do you work over um, Skype and Zoom and things like that as well? How do you operate? Uh, I do have a clinic that I work out of uh, in Los Angeles. And then I also work on Skype and Zoom and FaceTime. And uh, they work wonderfully. I, you know, don't need to be face-to-face. Just need, I mean, I prefer to see you. I, I can actually do over the phone as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I prefer to see the client. So um, either on Skype or, or FaceTime or any of those um, uh, things, I can, I can see clients. So I can see clients all over the world. Yeah. Perfect. So then that leads into the next bit of very nicely around, um, if anybody's looking to obviously reach out to yourself, obviously it can do through Facebook. Um, do you also have a website or anything like that? And if so, uh, you can uh, go to hypnosis.edu and just search the hypnotist there and you'll find me and contact me through there. Perfect. And maybe it'd be worthwhile. And then pretty... obviously Instagram as well um, at Bliss Hypnotherapy. My company is Bliss Hypnotherapy. Perfect. Do you want to drop those into the comments of this Facebook Live? Sure. Sure, I'll do that. That'll be easier. Uh, Great. 
It's all right. I just had a message pop up on the screen. Um, and as far as, I guess, um, words of wisdom to sort of wrap up the, the conversation and with everybody, what's some, uh, what's some wisdom that you've got to share? Sorry. Uh, sorry. No, you're right. <laughs> um, words of wisdom. Uh, in, in terms of uh, finding their passion or, or moving Where, towards their passion? Wherever you feel called to go with that question. Um, I think it's really important to take time to uh, go internal and within. And I think a lot of people have uh, problems doing that. Um, and so I, I find that um, like I said, meditation is a great way in order to do that. But I wasn't able to do that before I was hypnotized. I, my mind was racing so much, I couldn't do it. Mm. Um, and so hypnotherapy really helped me in order to get into the space where I could even go quiet and go within. And I think once you're able to do that, being in that space, you're actually, for me, I'm connected to the highest um, part of myself. Yep. And so asking myself questions in that space of what do I want? You know, where am I going? Is this right for me? The answers just become easy. I don't even have to like my, I, I shut off that part of my mind that, you know, questions and I really go into that part that knows what I want and knows the path for me. And so I'm able to ask myself those questions in that calm state connected within and I've based my life uh, on that questioning and, and knowing from within uh, what the right path is. Yeah, that is so super powerful. And that's something that I've experienced over the last couple of years. And prior to that, yeah, no connection to that whatsoever. So <laughs> knowing the, the contrast between uh, both sides, uh, that is very, very powerful um, information and, and suggestions mm -hmm. and also, um, uh, yeah, just words of wisdom. Let's go with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I want to thank you again for your time. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Uh, and as I said, from merely just reaching out to you on Instagram and saying, hey, I'm doing these live Facebook chats. Do you want to jump on and share your story and just being open and uh, being willing to do that. So I do very much appreciate it. And um, yeah, thank you. Oh, it's been an absolute uh, pleasure, and, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to come in and, and talk with you. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Fantastic. I really do appreciate it. All right, as said, drop the, the two links in the in the comments of this so anybody watching the, the live or the replay, they can uh, simply come and find yourself. And yeah, I will do that. Perfect. And I will speak to you soon, I'm sure. A new Yay. friendship being developed. Yeah, I'd love that. I'd love to keep in contact and, and share more information. Sounds good indeed. All right. Well, you have a I'm, is it day, have a great day early in the morning for you. So it is. And is it where is it for yourself? Is it afternoon? It's afternoon. It's around 3.30 or 4.00. All right. Well, you have a good afternoon slash evening. Yeah. And uh, thank you again. I appreciate it. You too. Have a wonderful day. Will do. Thank you.